Um, excuse me. I didn't. I guess I had swiped the GoPro over to pictures. Uh, so I was recording and talking the whole time, and or thought I was recording, and I wasn't recording anything. I talked all about a whole bunch of stuff. So I had. I guess I don't remember what I was saying, but. I finished ghosting in here and now I'm able to cut wood and where I had to cross the rock wall and where I crossed it, I gotta leave enough open where you cross to connect the trails because all these trails on this lower piece are gonna go through that entrance. And I, and I guess we're heading, the GPS, the GPS is tracking me right, but it's all kind of, over the place here. But, um, so I was just talking. There's a lot of beach in here. Um, quite a bit of oak, but mo most all the oak we're cutting is going to be log quality and less like like that one right here where I'm making a trail or I'm cutting my way and I, I've got to cut it. But most of the oak that we're gonna cut is gonna be log quality. Because the paper mills, they'll take some, but they really don't want a whole lot. And um, a lot of the firewood guys don't want a lot of oak either. It makes good firewood, but it, it really the drying time it stays green a lot longer and so i've got one guy that doesn't really care as long as we separate it and, but a lot of the other guys really just they just don't want it uh, or they don't want too much of it um, but we'll cut a lot of oak logs here so that'll be that'll be fine and um but i was also talking about other like bigger news i guess that i haven't really talked about is uh which it's been going on it's been in motion pretty much since springtime where this last spring when i hurt my shoulder and i had been kind of looking for a while but there's just not a lot out there that i really wanted and uh, i've been looking for a piece of land to buy that was on a main route because I, I don't know if it's the same I think it's pretty much the same in most northeast states but you know after winter they put posters and weight limits up on the roads so if you I mean you could probably get permission from the town but technically at a certain point during the year you're you, you know they post the roads you can't move equipment in and out so if you were gonna have a commercial garage for logging or construction, you'd want it to be on a non-posted road or have some deal with the town. So I, while I was hurt and couldn't do much, I emailed a guy that he's from, and I think it was two years ago, we cut his property right in the same town I live in out on the main drag and so I um, I didn't figure he'd want to sell anything but I emailed him anyways told him what I was looking to do and he emailed me right back and said he'd be interested um, and I wasn't in a huge rush neither was he but it, you know it took quite a while and it, uh, so we agreed on a price and I was only gonna buy four or five acres and then he kind of asked if he threw out a price to buy it all and I said okay so it's like 13 acres or right around there and um, so there was he has a business partner that you know has a financial stake and you know the land so he kind of had to make it work for him too but, uh, but anyways, eventually came back and we got it all kind of squared away and the lawyers have done their stuff and I got 
call yesterday from the lawyer saying that Dave had signed what he needed to and um, I, just, I just needed to sign and bring in, I'm putting a pretty good down payment on it. Um, so yesterday I went into the bank, I had to deposit some money and this and that and I um, deposited some money and got a bank check for the lawyer so they could disperse the money and um, so yeah I mean on Friday I'll own a piece of land where the future business and it will be established so it's kind of cool it you know I actually um, you know it's kind of funny I've been in business for a long time but I actually really have a place to be established That'd be kind of neat. And I think what I'm kind of, even if I don't have a garage for a year or two, I'm going to, my plan is as soon as I, as soon as I get, you know, I technically own the land, I'm going to, uh, hopefully some week in here, I'll, I'll schedule to move the buncher once we get going here I'll move the buncher on like a Friday over there it's not that far away and then uh, just schedule when I schedule that to move it back on a Monday and open up the road and uh, the whole area where the garage will be and uh, then I'm gonna have my brother-in-law's father uh, who does a lot of little you know trucks will it does some excavation stuff and have him stump and gravel and do the road and the whole area where the garage will be so I'll have pretty much all the groundwork done and that way um, even if I don't have build the garage right off um, you know I'll have a space where we can low bed equipment in there and I can have my service trailer and my and I've got a 500 gallon fuel tank and and I'm gonna probably get one of those Connex containers and you know that way I, you know I won't may, maybe I won't have a garage but I'll actually I'll have something to work out of and um, that'll be uh, quite handy um, so come next spring because for me I've never even had a place of my own where I could bring equipment. You know, if I did bring it somewhere, I was always parked in somebody's door yard or something, and you know, I always hate doing that. Um, well, there's a big oak tree that it's kind of angled wrong here. I've got to wiggle my way over there. Um, so I'll keep it plowed this winter and opened up, and it's pretty sandy, so. You know, it's, it shouldn't require, I mean, it should hold up pretty good, I guess, for being broken ground. And then, you know, I'll have the whole area opened up. And then, you know, when I get to the point where I can ready to pull the trigger on the garage, then, you know, that there's not a lot. Uh, I've already done a lot of the groundwork, so. So that's my plan. And that's uh, some of the bigger, latest news besides starting over here and uh, rocky rocky Rome but I was I think I was saying when I started this video that I have a sometimes I have a hard I'm generally a pretty optimistic guy but when it comes to walking wood I'm usually a little conservative where I tend to think that you know, like this job I was like yeah it's okay um, you know I knew that it was decent it's better wood than what we were cutting but then once I get cutting it I'm like oh volumes quite a bit better here right timber timber yeah timber uh, was not all that excited about riding in the buncher. Maybe because he doesn't do it a lot. Um, so I, uh, I, 
was getting ready to get him in here. He, he uh, tries to avoid it at all costs. Once he knew, knows he doesn't have a choice, you know, he's got his little monkey here. It's like, I mean, he hasn't done anything bad, but it's kind of what he's acting like. Um, he, Christ, I didn't even have to pick him up. He hopped right up on the tracks and right into the cab. So I'm going to try to see now I can't remember whether I talked about this in the video or the video I thought I was taking, but I'm going to maybe try to take him here a little more um, on the days that I'm running the buncher here. I'm pretty close to home and uh, we're getting to the time of year where it's getting a little cooler. So even though I got the air conditioning in here, it's just a little more comfortable for him. It's not like you can navigate yourself through these boulders, but which is fine. I'm doing a lot more weaving. The only thing that sucks is, you know, like when you double cut a tree, it's not as easy to work your way around it without um, kind of getting on some boulders here. So I'll probably, well, yeah, I know I am. I'm going to double cut that pine tree. Then I got to position myself to get up there and cut that oak tree. That's a good oak tree, so I don't want to damage it, if you know what I mean. This looks like a pretty good pine tree. Some of these rocks I could probably move. if they're not like that one moves easy I'm not gonna beat the machine and slam the blade on it I'll do it if I can just get it over there enough Sort of fit through here without hitting the edge of it. I'm a little, well, of course I'm careful with it because I pushing on it like that. I don't want to, if I drove that slipped and drove the saw into it, it's gonna, I'll definitely be replacing all the teeth for sure. No questions. saying there this should be a pretty good job so I can probably yeah I mean you're always looking at what to do but I'm gonna I was gonna wiggle my way up there and cut that oak first but I can cut that pine and set it right in the trail and then straddle the stump get up there and cut that oak tree. This is where it's a little bit of a pain. It's easy going forward with timber in here, but um, backing up, you know, it kind of paws getting away. No, 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 no. There we go. There we go. I went to say split that because I I don't know what I was thinking. I, well, it's not going to deduct anything because of the butt swell, but I uh, when I went to cut that, I don't know why. I was thinking in opposite. I uh, was hitting my left trigger I don't, instead of hitting the right, so it started to kind of go that way, which was going to land it into that oak tree. 
a decent pine. It has just a very little bit of uh, red rot. Some, sometimes you get in these pieces and they get a little pine in here and it's, everything's got a bunch of red rot in it. Um, which they will take. I was always, when I started cutting wood by hand, I always trimmed that off. But the pine mill Irving that we bring most of our wood to around here, they don't really care. I don't, I don't, and I don't know. I don't know. I should probably look into it a little more. So if it, I guess if the, if the wood doesn't clear up right away and it looks like the whole tree's gonna have red rot in it, then instead of just throwing it in the pulp, you still get logs out of it. All right, well, we're gonna uh, There's a nice oak tree. Look at that. Now that is a nice oak. A little maneuver there. Probably cut that one too. I'm trying to leave like a, you know, like a 14 inches tree is what I'm trying to leave here uh, to grow because although you would get a good log out of a 14-inch tree, you're only going to get one. And um, so you're kind of wasting that where that's got time to grow. So we're trying to leave the next crop per se. get up here and get that beach right there. Uh, almost kind of cre creeping around here and um, there won't be any cutting in here and um, rabbit. We're going to stay right in low. I help myself around as much as I can. Like even this, you get right here and help push yourself back so that, you know, with the tree, once it tips the other way, you're not slamming. A lot of times once it goes back over, you know, it's going to slam and the balance goes the other way. And when you're cutting wood like that, um, you know, maybe not consistently, but consistently pocketed through the job, you know, that, that type of wood is where you're gonna get some really good volume. Which makes us happy, Timber. All right, well, I'm doing a, just kind of doing another video here. I'm starting a new job. It's closer to home. Um, so a little more enthusiasm. It's nice to get out of New Vineyard. I've been there for quite some time. And uh, so I'm going to try and get some other videos out. And working my way down to the his campsite that I got to cut off and so anyways I figured I'd do a video and um, hopefully y'all are good you like subscribe comment and we will catch you later uh, rattle it around on rocks on a Saturday I'm gonna see if I can scratch my way up to cut that nice oak I'm trying to help myself is much as I can.
this is uh, the roughest, uh, I think, part of this job. And once we get done this, should smooth out a little. if this head wasn't so big it'd be really hard to double cut stuff here just because you can't really move maneuver around that easy that is a big big oak tree top's a little ugly but Still, there's oak logs in it. Oak logs, but trying to. The other thing is to be able to kind of weave it around so it doesn't take half the forest with it. to uh, the, the camp road is right there so my goal was is to work this last section um, up along the 
road and then head on the other half. It's just, I think the wood's not bad and it's bigger stuff, so I think I'm cutting plenty. It just seems kind of slow and tedious because I'm not gonna just hammer this machine. I, I'm, uh, got it in kind of creep gear and help myself around as much as I can. Um, try to make it as easy as I can on the undercarriage. It's kind of an art to this stuff too, just because this is a camp road. The guy that we're cutting for is building a house down here on the lake. Really super nice guy. He understands that we're working and you know there's only so much we can do, but instead of it's it was pretty wide. Um, and the road's kind of curvy. So I probably could have put a couple trails in here instead of putting two. I'm putting one. I'm following the road. So instead of putting two, that would open this up a lot. I'm, I'm following the contour of the road and then nosing in to get the wider parts that I can't reach, which will give it a structural, a better structural look along the road, um, which is what I'm kind of looking for. I want as much as we can for uh, anybody driving down this road uh, to have a less, I mean, there's no way to make it look like we didn't cut anything, but just to have more structure. And the less trails you have and the more space between, there's a little more structure left. It just, it just has a different look. I mean, if I were cutting, uh, I, that's what I, if I had a camp I, and I wanted to cut the wood too, that's what I would want. So I'm trying to strike a little bit of a balance here and still, uh, still cut wood. And the stuff that I am leaving next to the road is going to be like uh, the oak. And if, if I have to a uh, healthy beach, trying to maintain structure any way I can. And it would be good if he's gonna be living in here to have a little bit more sunlight on the road just because that'll kind of help in the winter time. that'll be more brush. I don't know what I'll hack this video up into being.
think that looks nice. Of course, I'm biased. I try not to be. But it's hard sometimes. When you're doing what you love,
starting to warm up and turn the AC on.